Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a jump into our art support nexus and we're going to be working on this amazing dragon by our friend Chloe Tanner. So Chloe was um, asking us for some help. By the way, if you don't, if you guys don't know about this uh, specific uh, like thing that we have here in the channel, we have this art support where you can drop your files, drop a note, and that'll help you troubleshoot or, or advance on your uh, works in progress. You can also do this on the Discord, by the way. So it says, "Hi there. I hope you're doing well. I was hoping you could give me a hand with this piece. I'm working on the high poly of this dragon, but something is off with the design silhouette, and I can't quite get it right. I don't know if it's due to the mismatch of perspective between 2D and 3D, or if there's something wrong with the model itself. I would love for you to rip this apart and see what's wrong, wrong with this piece. I don't want to progress to reach apology cleanup until it fixes. The concept is an older piece by Johan Grainier. I can be found here, and uh, the model was done in Seabrush. So yeah, let's get uh, into it. I'm gonna show." you chloe one of the tips or tricks that i use for my construction so first thing first the the first thing i'm gonna notice like right out of the box is that this seems to be a little bit like off center i'm not sure but i'm gonna test this real quick by doing a mirror and weld and uh no okay everything seems to be symmetrical so yeah i think you're right like when we see it from the front it looks a little bit weird but when we see it from an angle like this like getting closer to the to the image it looks a little bit better so first tip make sure that you do not use a dynamic perspective they never perspective will just like modify things and and make them really really weird to to analyze and, and get correctly. Now, if you are gonna be using dynamic perspective, as you can see here, it really changes the, the character quite a bit. And that is a problem because when you're doing a shot for a movie or commercial or whatever, you're gonna be changing from focal lengths quite a bit. So it can look quite different depending on what lens you use. Now, um, again, if you go here to document, I believe it's not document where it's, it... I always forget what this is. There we go, here under draw, there is a, this thing right here, the focal length, and what you can do is bring this up quite a bit. So again, draw, and over here, I'm gonna bring the focal length like a little bit higher over there. And uh, let's see if that changes, there we go. So as you can see now, since the uh, focal length is quite higher, in this case it's like 237, 200, like whatever, like 85 even, like that's that's not gonna change this as much. As you can see, the, the difference is not as bad. So, so you can sculpt with dynamic perspective, when the defocal length is low. Now, I think you did a great job here to, to match most of the concepts. So, so this is a really, really good match. Like, I think you did capture the, the silhouette. Now, here's where things start getting a little bit weird. I think where you're having some issues is on the neck of the character. And um, usually for dragons, they tend to have long necks, right? So I think we're getting confused here with some of the shoulder muscles from the uh, neck muscles. Now I'm gonna go a little bit nerdy here, but there's a, a difference between dragons and wyverns. Um, like most, m most of you will know the difference, but uh, if we talk to like the general audience, they don't even know that that's a difference. So from uh, the way I see them, wyverns are dragons that have the like arms, like pretty much attached to the wings. So their wings and their arms are the same thing. And dragons, I normally like see like this guys, they have the wings coming from the, from the back. Uh, I know that there are some games that they do it like the other way around, but I, I like that sort of like, um, what's the word? That sort of effect. So here, as you can see, I, I'm going to turn off the dynamic perspective. I normally don't work with dynamic perspective turned on, and I'm going to push the neck in a little bit. Make sure that this is like a long, nice neck for the character. And then over here, I do want to like start drawing the general volume of what I would expect the, um, let's say the the shoulder muscles to be. They're not precisely going to be the shoulder muscles, but we definitely want to add something there. Now, something really interesting happens with uh, like human anatomy and like uh, an animal anatomy. And the thing is, there's a lot of similarities. Now, unfortunately, dragons are not real. And I say unfortunately because I would love them to be real, but maybe not because they will be killing a lot of people. But if we look for something similar, I'm gonna say a horse. So if we look for a horse anatomy, for instance, you're gonna see that the way the neck connects and everything, it's, I wouldn't say it's exactly like a dragon, but it's gonna get us close. So look at how the neck creates this sort of like B shape from like the sternocleidomastodius muscle. It might not be the exact same muscle, but it looks very similar to what we have right here, right? So uh, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go with Damien Stender here, and I'm gonna create the nice like sharp V line that we're gonna see right there. And then we're gonna have this guys right here. You can see it's this long one right here going towards the head. So we're gonna do that one. And then there's another like slim one going through the side, which will be this one. And this is where we're using, this is called comparative anatomy. It's really, really, really helpful because you can um, 
you can extrapolate a lot of things that we have in the in the natural world into the fantasy world and create things that are going to be a little bit more believable. I'm going to do Dynamesh here real quick. Hopefully we don't lose a lot of detail. We did lose a little bit. Let's increase the resolution. There we go. And uh, yeah, there we go. Now, I'm going to give you another tip, Chloe. And this is a very famous artist. Her name is Theri uh, Whitlash, I think. Whitlash. Uh, designer. I'm going to get the proper name in just a second. Yeah, there you go. Terry Whitlash. So she is a very famous designer in Hollywood because she knows her stuff about like the traditional way like um, uh, creatures are made. So she's been working hand in hand with uh, James Cameron for uh, the Avatar films. She is responsible for creating most of the of the animals that you see in those films. And that this book by her is really, really cool. I actually have one on my library. Actually, let me go for There we go. Let's go full screen real quick. So uh, this is the, the book by her. It's a very old edition. It's like, well, not very old, but like, I think probably like, like 10 years or something. And uh, you can see one of the cool things about this book is that you get all of the like anatomy sketches and studies and how she compares the anatomy from animals like this boar, the rhino and all of those different animals. So we have like real animals. And then later on, we go into like the fantastical animals, like the like the design process is really, really, really cool. I strongly recommend it. it has like cartoon stuff, realistic stuff. Look at this guy right here. Like she actually thinks about the whole like anatomy of how he would eat and stuff. So, so really, really cool. If you can get um, a copy of this one, I think you could uh, learn a lot of anatomy for, for creatures. And of course, this definitely translates to uh, dragons. Now, before we continue with the feedback here, I just want to remind you guys that we are actually running a sale. I think today is the last day. So if you're, if you're still watching this, make sure to check the link down here and uh, make sure to get any of our courses. We go over anatomy in most of the character courses that I teach. So you're going to be learning a lot of this stuff in those courses and you can get them with a 90% off. Check this out. Hey guys, Abraham here with huge news. For the next five days, from April 22 to April 27, you guys are gonna be able to get a 90% discount for any of our courses in Udemy. If you're a beginner level artist and you wanna learn Maya, Cyber, Substance, or any of the softwares that we normally use in the industry, this is the best shot for you. And if you're already an intermediate or advanced student and you wanna improve your portfolio and get to the next level, then we have advanced characters, advanced creatures, advanced environments, and all of the other things that are gonna make you a better artist. All of our courses are recorded real time. We include the files. We have a Q&A and a Discord channel to answer any of your questions. And the discount is gonna be available only for the next five days from April 22 to April 27. So, what are you waiting for? Get your promo code, go to the link down here, and become a great artist in no time. There we go. So now, Chloe, I'm going to show you, and of course, everyone else, uh, this is the, the thing I like about this uh, it's a series, that not only am I helping someone that needs the help, but everyone else that's watching this is also going to be learning. So I'm going to show you one very cool trick. This trick I learned ooh, a long time ago. Actually, before I went to Noman, I was working at a small studio here in Mexico, and they taught me this trick, which is really, really cool. So you're going to try to match the perspective of your character as close as possible to what we have right here, which would be, I would say, something like this. And then with Windows or the snipping tool or whatever, you're just going to copy this image right here. There we go. Then we're going to jump into Photoshop. As you can see, I got the image ready over here. Let me move this guy. And then uh, we're going to copy this guy right here. And we're going to scale the image so that it roughly matches, or we get it as close as possible to the size that we have. Once we have this, in another layer, you're going to start drawing with a, a red marker or red, a red pencil lines that are going to go from one position of the character to the next position. There we go. So for instance, here, I need to fit this guy from the tip of the horns to, bo to the bottom of the mouth. So I'm going to grab this guy again, Let's scale it a little bit. And that's about it. Like that's, that's pretty, pretty damn close. So now we're going to start comparing how close we are in regards to the position of the main elements. So as you can see, if I project the eye, I should be touching the eye on the other side. This means that my eye is a little bit low in this case. If I project, for instance, at the bottom of the of the chin and I bring this up, it says here, or it, it indicates here, that my chin might be a little bit uh, lower. Now, this doesn't have to... Uh, there's a couple of school of thoughts. Some people say that you have to match it perfectly, and some people say that you can add a little bit of your artistic stuff. I'm more of the second thing. I, I like to add a little bit of my artistic stuff because that's what, what makes us us, right? Like our, our own style. But you want to capture the essence of the character. That's the, that's the main thing. So I do think that you've captured the essence, but there's a couple of things that we're missing. For instance, we're missing the all of the spikes here on the back, which since you've already done this as separate subtitles, I would suggest you do that as well. And then we're missing this. This is very important, I think. We, we have a very smooth transition right here. And on the concept, we have this jaggedy, like a scaly thing. 
So I'm going to go back to, to Seabrush now. And uh, there's a couple of ways which in which we can do it. I can see like two or three. So here's what I would do to just get like a general effect. I would just like mask this out, invert the mask, and then just push this up and bring it back like that. Simple as that, right? And then we can do the same thing over here. Just mask, bring this right there, push it up, and push it back. And that's going to create a little bit of uh, overlap on the things. And then we just tighten the mesh, of course, and we just start cleaning up. Now, I'm not going to go into the cleanup process. I know you you know how to do that already because I see some of your very, very nice forms here on the on the top of the character. So it will be just a matter of like blending this in so that when we see it from the side, that we, again, we can see these things like punching out. Um, very, very important. Now, we did mention that the eye was a little bit low. So let's bring the eye a little bit higher. That, of course, means that we're going to have to bring the other sub tool up. There we go. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, don't worry too much about this front view. Um, I, like certain animals look really, really weird from the front view. I do think it has a little bit too much cheeks right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the cheeks in. It, it shouldn't change that much on the on the perspective view, but it should make her or, or its um its like main face a little bit more menacing when seen from the from the front. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. Now. One thing that you're going to notice is the lightning on this uh, character. And um, it, it's a little bit complex. or it's, There's always going to be a little bit of a difference when we translate a concept piece to a sculpture. Why? Because the concept piece is, is rendered. Like, it's actually rendered. People shade and light the character to get, like, a very, very nice effect. And this one right here might not look exactly like that. So there's one thing that I like to do, and I'm actually going to show you right here, which is I like to bring my characters, even on the like early sculpting stages, I like to bring them into Maya, Marmoset, Blender, Unreal Engine, like whatever engine you want to use. I like to bring them in and try to replicate the light just to get an idea of, of how it's looking with the lights on so that I can see if I'm actually capturing things the way I'm imagining them, okay? So let me show you how we're going to do this. Uh, let's go to Maya here. First, of course, we need to export everything from, from Seabrush. I'm just going to say Subtool. And then Merge, Merge Visible. You can see we don't have a lot of uh, 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 like active points, so I'm just going to export this as is. And uh, I know I'm very messy, so I'm going to export it on my on my uh, desktop for now. I'm just going to call this, uh, let's call this Chloe Dragon. There we go. And we're going to go to Maya. So here inside of Maya, we're just going to say, if I, well, actually, let's just for this too. There we go. So we're going to say file, import, and we're going to import. Let's bring the reference image. I'm using pure ref, by the way. This is an amazing software. I love pure ref. So, so good. There we go. So we're going to bring in uh, the Chloe, Chloe's dragon. There we go. We actually have some cameras. That's fine. I'm actually going to keep one. Say panels, look to select it. I'm going to zoom out, scale this up so that we have more control over the light. And let's find the perspective so it's like roughly around there i'm gonna turn on my resolution gate and i'm gonna go to my render settings i'm gonna change my render settings to a 2k square there we go now if this happens where where you're even even with the resolution gate you're not seeing the full picture you can select the camera and then go to the options Control a and down here to the object display i'm no, not sorry it's to the display options we can bring the overscan a little bit higher, like 1.5. There we go. So now we, we can see the actual square that's going to be rendering. So something like this. The camera is definitely a little bit like intense. So I'm going to bring the focal length up to, I'm going to say 55. There we go. Cool. So we do have a background. So I'm just going to add my very traditional infinite background that I like to, to use. I'm going to just select this border right here, push this up. And by the way, we cover all of these rendering things on our courses as well. I actually have a, a master or yeah, it's a master class. It's a rendering master class where I teach uh, a little bit more of advanced stuff about rendering. So panels, so there we go. So I'm going to go to Arnold, Lights, Skydome Light. And on this Skydome Light, I'm going to add a file. It doesn't really matter which HDRI we're using. I'm going to use this blocky folder studio, but it doesn't matter because we're going to go really, really soft. So on the options for this um, HDRI or for this uh, Skydome light, I'm going to say something like minus five on exposure. So it's going to be really, really dark. Let's save real quick. I don't want this to, um, to crash when we render. I'm going to save real quick. We're going to go to our system and we're going to change this to GPU. I'm going to say Arnold and render. And what we should see is just a very basic representation. If we go here to the shot shape, there we go. That's the, that's the dragon right there. And this is like exactly the darkness that I want for the, for the full scene. 
Now I'm going to select the character again, right click, and I'm going to sign a new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. And uh, we're going to make this a, it's going to be a black and white image. So just, I just want to make this thing a little bit rougher on the, on the material side of things, maybe a little bit more rougher. It's very matte. Like I don't see a lot of shine on the dragon's skin. There we go. Now we can start seeing the lights. And the, this is where we're training your eye to observe where the lights are, is very important. So actually, sorry, I thought this was, there we go. So what I'm seeing here is that the light is mostly focused on this area of the carriage, like a, like a soft light coming from the, from the top. So I'm going to go Arnold lights. I'm going to create an area light. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to make it big. If you want soft shadows, you make a big light and we're going to have this right there. Now the problem is I'm going to increase the exposure to something like 15. I like using exposure. There we go. That's way too much. As you can see, I also don't want this uh, Like I don't want to see the, the ground. I want this to kind of like vanish. There we go. Let's just scale this so that we don't see the, the background there. Perfect. So, so that's cool. We're getting the light where we want, but it's way, way too intense, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this element right here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to change the spread down. This is going to focus the light only on the character. It's also going to increase the intensity quite a bit. It's going to burn the whole thing. So we're going to have to bring this back down. Now, if you have a powerful computer, you can actually, oh, let's close this. If you have a powerful computer, you can actually see this in real time. So again, I'm going to save real quick and you can go render Arnold. It's going to like warm up. And once it's ready, there you go. You can see this happening. So I can adjust, for instance, the exposure of the light and I should see a, a real time like result for the, for the whole thing. I'm not going to do it because I, I've actually uh, grown used to just doing it here on the, on the render view. You could also leave the render view on. So if you leave IPR on, it'll do the, the movement there and, uh, and we can play around with the numbers over here. There we go. So look at that eight on the exposure, smaller size, smaller uh, spread. And as you can see, we're focusing this a little bit more on the character itself. I'm going to move this even more. I'm just going to focus this a little bit more, make it a little bit smaller, even. Look at that. So if we start comparing, we're like, yeah, you know what? Like, we're, I, I think we're actually capturing the, the details. Then we're in a good uh, position. So what I want to capture with this light is I want to capture this like light effects right there. I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit more. Not too much. Probably something like that. Now, see how there's light on the mouth as well? That's where, where things from a concept start having issues with things from the real world because you might not be able to capture this exact same like lightning technique with um with the concept so or with traditional light. So I'm gonna have to create a new light right here. I'm gonna position this light a little bit lower so that it's hitting only the tongue of the character. Okay, so that we get this nice highlight that we have right there. And they do this in movies as well. There we go. I'm gonna bring the spread really, really, really down. See how we're only illuminating the um the tongue right now. They do this in movies as well. Like this is one of those secrets that um that took me a while to understand. You can actually paint with light. And when you paint with light, you're able to create this very, very nice effect where, where you, you decide where the light is coming or going into, and, and you get just so much more control. It's not a lighting setup or a lighting scenario that you were going to find out there. Like, it's not like I'm going to go to a, I don't know, like an old church or something and just take a picture of myself and I'm going to get this perfect. Like this is, this is completely made, made up, right? So, so you will never get this sort of like light anywhere. It's, it, it's the specific lights pointing to the character. But as you can see here, it works. So for instance, see this light right here? That's another like small light that I can just uh, duplicate this guy. I'm actually going to make this like a, like a rectangle. I'm going to point it just to that part of the neck. So now when I uh, render, we're going to get this rectangle right there on the neck. And we can start playing around with the, with the rotation. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It's going to soften it up a little bit wider there. And then of course, we're going to start like reducing the, the intensity. There we go. So something like that. Okay. So again, this is painting with light. Now let's say you want even darker effects right here. Can we do that? And the answer is yes. How with something called light blockers. So I can create a plane here. And as long as this plane is like outside of the camera, but on the, on the sort of like direction of the elements, 
especially in this case because we have an HDRI. So we can use this to lower the amount of light that goes in there. Okay. In this case, the lights are really close to the character, so I'm going to have to like bring them out a little bit more and bring this in a little bit more, but we can use this as a as a blocker. And if you've ever been to like a like a photo session, they also use this to bounce light into the character. So if we want to bounce a little bit more light into the character, we could do it. Another thing we can do here is go to our imagers and we can use a lens effect and add a little bit of vignette. That's also going to just like darken the whole thing a little bit on the on the borders. And it's going to give us this very, very nice effect. Let's do one final touch here. I'm going to go to the elements here. I'm going to grab the, the little eyeballs. Oh, actually, I'll just move my camera here. There we go. So something like this. So, uh, or I could just say mesh and then separate. This is going to separate every single element. And I can grab the that eye right there. I'm going to say Arnold, lights, mesh light. I'm going to make this light visible and increase the exposure to something like a 10. And what that will do is now the eye will be an actual light bulb and it will uh, emit light. So let's just wait for this to, to load because we did do some changes to the geometry. I'm going to pause real quick and uh, show to the final render. Okay, so the render was a little bit too intense, as you can see right there. So I'm, I'm bringing this back to like a 2. And there we go. We get a, a very nice effect. Now, the final thing that we can do is just uh, play a little bit with the camera to find a better angle. It's a little bit like a race like this. There we go. And there we go. We get a very, very nice effect. So this is what I mean by doing a render test to see if, again, you're capturing the essence of the character, which I think in this case we are. I think we're... We're really, really close to capturing his essence. And uh, there is, for instance, this, this is a perspective issue where I, I think the nose looks a little bit more like forward facing than it should be. But I, I do think that you capture it very, very nicely on your um, on your concept, Chloe. So just keep going. I think you have a great like portfolio piece here, but you need to finish it. So adding all of the scales, all of the details, everything. I'm not sure if you want to texture it. It seems from your uh, note that you did want to do it. This is one of those projects that I would definitely recommend using UDIMS to get like super high quality textures for the for the final render. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this information has helped you and everyone else watching this video. And again, if you want to learn more about 3D, we have a lot of courses, over 60 courses with all of this information and more so that you too can become a master of 3D and you can check the link down here. We have a Discord channel as well. And uh, if you're a part of our student like community, you can submit your questions like Chloe did. And I'm going to be very happy to help you out in your career as well. So that's it for me, guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to have a surprise live stream. So make sure to hit the little subscribe button, the notify option, so that you get the news when we're going to do it. We're going to be doing a Ganondorf from the Lane of Zelda. I, I'm really hyped about that game, so I thought it would be a good idea to do like a like a fan art of the, of the new like Ganondorf design. So yeah, that's it, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. And if you have any questions, please leave it on the comments. Bye-bye.